Good evening. Tonight on Estuary TV News, we take a look at how food banks in Hull are coping with the increasing demand from struggling families. Also tonight, how industry and wildlife groups are working together to create habitats for small animals. And finally, we talk to Stu Cox from On The Bench about an exciting weekend of sport. Welcome to Estuary TV News with me, James Dunn. But first, here's Emma Lingard with the news headlines. Hello, the headlines today. A cab driver is being sought by police in the Stephen Herbert Hull murder. Police have arrested a 15-year-old boy in Hull after suspicious explosive substances were uncovered and Grimsby's bus station closes for renovation work. Police are appealing for a cab driver who picked up suspects in the murder of Stephen Herbert in Hull to come forward. Three people from Hull have been charged in connection with the death of the 34-year-old who died on New Year's Day in the city following a violent altercation. Samuel Jordan, 22, Sol Humphreys, 21 and Tiffany Clark, 23 were all charged with murder. Humberside Police has released CCTV images showing the driver around 6am at the junction of Strand Close and Beverley Road. Anyone with information should contact 01482 220328. A 15 year old boy has been arrested after suspected explosive substances were found at a house in Hull. Army bomb disposal experts and emergency services were called to a property in Kilnsea Grove following a tip-off. The teenager was arrested on Sunday night along with a 49-year-old woman and 56-year-old man. Residents were evacuated as a precaution. Another one million has to be saved by Humberside Police following another round of government cuts. The cuts will be made on top of five million already earmarked for saving in 2014-15. The latest cuts were announced by the Home Office. A food bank in Hull is proving very popular and is much in demand. The Trussell Trust has seen emergency food parcels being sent out to householders in need. Sarah Sidwell, project manager, has seen a rise in people coming to them for help. We have become so busy in the last few months. We expected it because of lots of the changes that were coming into play from April. And we really saw those kind of in the midsummer and now. But particularly we're seeing a big rise in people who are in work coming to us. It is a slow and steady rise, but that is one group that are really starting to need us. Grimsby bus station has closed as part of the redevelopment of the Riverhead area. All bus services have temporarily been moved to the Town Hall Street and the taxi rank has been relocated to Victoria Street South outside the Hope and Anchor pub. Hundreds of pregnant women across the region have been given flu jabs. Midwives at Northern Lincolnshire and Ghoul NHS Foundation Trust have been offering the women the chance to protect themselves and their unborn child as part of routine antenatal clinics. Studies have shown the flu vaccine can be given at any stage of a pregnancy with no risks to mother or baby. This is the second year the vaccinations have been offered. <clears throat> Householders in the region are starting the new year with financial worries, according to Charity Shelter. 7% of people worry about paying the mortgage or rent at this time of year. The research showed high housing costs, wage freezes and rises in food and energy bills had created a nightmare scenario for many. Anyone worrying about money should seek help. Three Humberside Fire Rescue Apprentices have started the new year at Tatter Steel in Scunthorpe. Louis Downing, Daniel Barker and Ben Foster went through a rigorous selection process to get on the two-year apprenticeship programme. They've now been assigned a watch at the steel firm. Daniel also won the Silver Axe Award for Best Overall Recruit. Conservation work has been undertaken at the South Humber Power Station in Stallingborough. The Hedge Lane course even saw the manager of the station take part. The 50-acre site is home to a diverse range of wildlife habitats. The event was assisted by Humber Nature Partnership. The sort of skills, looking at such as Toby, one of the students, he's really taking a shine to conservation because he wants to go into sort of agriculture 
and if he comes out with Humber conservation volunteers like this we'll get him through his practical skills, practical training. We've got more to do than just make power, that we've got an obligation on the surrounding land and the surrounding communities to give something back. And it's quite easy for us, I suppose, for the management team and that to come down and do this sort of thing, but without involving the rest of the site team. That's all. Join us again later. Goodbye. Thanks, Emma. Hedge laying is a dying art form that is seldom done for its original purpose, that of keeping livestock in place. But as part of learning new skills and keeping old ones alive, the Humber Nature Partnership teaches people locally how to help conserve important habitats for the benefit of the wildlife. And most of its work is carried out with the local industrial landscape. Last month they came to the South Humber Power Station and Emma Lingard went to find out more. People don't often think of power stations being environmentally friendly, but at Stallingborough they take their commitment to the environment seriously and are also involved in conservation on site. I've been in the industry now for quite a long time and every power station I've worked at we've tried where possible to, to do a lot of work on biodiversity, making sure the surrounding land is well cared for and also using any sort of volunteers like we've got here today to, to support us in that, so we're providing something back to the community. And that giving back has seen Humber Nature Partnership work on the 50-acre site, teaching volunteers from a local school how to lay hedges. Hedges are very important for conservation. In the, in the past, they were purely and simply to control stock. They didn't have barbed wire, uh, ordinary fences would be expensive and wouldn't last very long, whereas a hedge is a, a permanent feature if it's managed properly, and that's what we're doing today. So in the past it would have been for stock control. Nowadays it's uh, primarily done for nature conservation. The land is diverse, having woodland and grassland, and is an excellent habitat for wildlife and a great playground to learn. Like a lot of uh, the industrial sites, they do have land around them that, that is potentially good habitat for, for wildlife conservation. Uh, and on this particular site, it's 50 acres of, of land, uh, which is quite diverse. We've got woodland here, we have two ponds, we have about 2,000 metres of ditches, which is like a big linear pond. Um, we have hedgerows and we have grassland. In all of that, uh, we create a management strategy um, which differs in, it, differs in its practices to try and promote um, good habitat for biodiversity and get as many species of wildlife here as we can. Government cuts in this period of austerity have hit many people in different ways and Chancellor George Osborne said yesterday that it's not going to get any easier in the immediate future. But these hard times have led to a rise in the number of organisations offering emergency aid to families in need. Reporter Erica Barker went to visit a food bank in Hull which has seen a huge increase in demand. Emergency food for local people, that's Hull Food Bank's slogan. Part of the Trussell Trust, people are referred to the charity in times of need. We have become so busy in the last few months. We expected it because of lots of the changes that were coming into play from April. And we really saw those kind of in the midsummer and now. But particularly we're seeing a big rise in people who are in work coming to us. It is a slow and steady rise but that is one group that are really starting to need us. From pasta through to something a little sweeter, all of the food is donated by local organisations and individuals. Manned by volunteers, they work hard to ensure all the food bags are ready. In November 2012, they helped 97 people. In the same period last year, 374 walked through these doors. Duncan Thompson is one of the first faces people see, ready with a cup of tea and a listening ear. People who are existing on bread and milk, so the, the, the bag of food which lasts them three days is my thing, gives them a, a range of, it's all worked out nutritionally to give them the balanced diet. We also talk to them about the problems, benefit problems and things like that. It's, it's the, the emotional support we give as well. And as the number of people needing a helping hand is on the increase, these donations could be a lifeline for many. Erica Barker, SGV TV. Great to know that help is at hand. 
Now we've got Stu Cox in the studio to tell us about the weekend's sports results. Thanks, James. I couldn't be more proud of my players, were the words of Grimsby Town manager Paul Hurst after Grimsby's show-stopping third-round FA Cup game against championship side Huddersfield Town. Non-league Grimsby twice had the lead with goals from Ross Hanna and Craig Disley, but Huddersfield equalised and an unfortunate 90th minute own goal from Aswad Thomas put them through to the next round. Hull City looked forward to a trip to Phil Brown's South End in the fourth round after a 2-0 win over lower league opponents Middlesbrough. Aaron McLean scored for the Tigers just 24 hours after being recalled from a loan spell at Birmingham and Nick Proshfritz got the second to clinch the victory. Grimsby Borough made it back-to-back -back wins for the first time since August with a 3-0 win away at Yorkshire Amateur. Kyle Bensley, George Newby and Dave Walsh were the scorers. North Ferriby returned to the top of the Screw North on Saturday with a 1-0 win over title rivals Hednesford. Anthony Wilson claiming the only goal of the game for the Villagers. Doncaster have recalled midfielder Dave Sayers from Scunthorpe United. Scunthorpe were without a game on Saturday, but a fantastic run of form has seen the Iron go top of League Two. Scunthorpe also announced Russell Wilcox as manager over the Christmas period. In rugby, Grimsby beat Skegness at Springfield Road, claiming a 25-14 win, keeping Grimsby eighth in the league. Lincoln were our big winners on Saturday, beating Nottingham Moderns 52-20 at Longdale Park. Lincoln are currently third in the Midlands 3 East North. Market Raisin travelled to Matlock, hoping to keep up their run of good form, but fell short, losing 15-10. It was a walkover win for Cleethorpes after Leesbrook failed to put a side together. Cleethorpes are currently 7th in the Midlands 4 East League. Hull remain in trouble at the wrong end of the National 2 North after a 37-17 home defeat by Macclesfield. In the National 3 North, Beverly though travelled to Rossendale, beating them 31-21 in a thrilling game. Hessel remained bottom of the Yorkshire Division 4 after a 31-5 defeat to Stocksbridge. In ice hockey, Hull Stingrays got four points out of the weekend doubleheader, claiming two victories. The Stingrays travelled to Coventry on Saturday, winning 2-1, before playing five flyers at Hull Arena, winning 5-4, in what was a thriller for fans. And finally, in Rugby League, new Hull FC signing Jordan Rankin has arrived in the area and says he can't wait to get started. Rankin, who signed from the Australian side Gold Coast Titans, is one of seven new signings for Hull, who could feature in a friendly against Doncaster this Sunday. But it hasn't been good news for Hull KR fans over the Christmas period. The club announced Sean Gleeson broke his leg in the club's winter training camp in Tenerife, just months after fearing he may have had to retire due to injury problems last season. Rovers start their campaign against Leeds Rhinos at Craven Park on the 16th of February. Thanks very much, Stu. So, uh, how about that Grimsby game? Oh, it was so unlucky, James. They went, twice had the lead against championship opposition. Not many non-league teams can get that. Because you were there. I mean, what was the atmosphere like in, in the park at the time? It was bouncing. It literally was. Uh, all the fans from all the stands, the Grimsby fans, were really making an atmosphere for the town players. And it showed in the first half. There was under the cosh a little bit. And what about Aswad Thomas? Will he recover from that very unfortunate uh, own goal oh, at the end there? Well, it's his second own goal of the week. He also got one against Lincoln on New Year's Day. It's about, he'll keep his, a strong head. He's one of them players where he'll just think of the next game. So he'll bounce back? Yeah, they've got Maidenhead on Saturday, obviously, in the trophy. It's a chance for them to go further on in another cup competition. Great. Thanks very much, June. And that's all from Estuary TV News. We'll see you again tomorrow. Find out what's top of the sports discussion league this week. Join the team for new episodes of On the Bench, Tuesdays at 6.